कुमार सामी नायक है बोम वाली बुलेटो का रेडियो फिजी टू में पुराना गाना लगे हमें बहुत अच्छा लगे रेडियो फिजी टू देश की धड़कन Good evening, Fiji. In this bulletin, Minister reveals agricultural setback. New lab plan for Nandi. And school bids farewell to deceased brothers. From the studios of FBC Subo, Jackie Smith. Fiji is lagging behind on the sugarcane sector by producing only 16 tons per acre. This has been revealed by the Agriculture Ministry, which says the low efficiency and productivity amongst the various crops and livestock sector is one of the major setbacks for them. Apart from sugar, rice and livestock farms are also lagging. Sainiani Boiler reports. The agriculture sector is only realizing 20% of its potential as farmers are failing to produce due to certain factors. The average productivity of sugarcane, average uh, partial productivity, is about 40 tons per acre. We are operating at about 16 tons per acre. And in that manner, you can work it out, compute partial productivity in rice, in uh, cassava and dalo vegetables, we know that we are around basically on the left of the mean productivity. While sugar and other crops are being affected, the livestock sector has also been affected. This is mainly due to the diseases such as brucellosis and tuberculosis. Until we reverse this, where our cattle, beef cattle and dairy cattle are totally free from brucellosis and TB, then we can increase the number of head and then we can raise milk production and beef cattle production. Fiji Development Bank General Manager Shakat Ali says they are willing to provide the relevant financial support needed by the farmers to up the ante. Because FDB can do further financing together with the government and we encourage, we invite people to come to the bank. The Agriculture Ministry has incentives and programs in place for farmers who are willing to invest in large-scale farming and help the sector grow. Sainia Nimboila, FBC News. The Ministry of Health is working with the World Health Organization to set up a testing lab for a Fiji Center for Disease Control in Nandi. Minister for Health and Medical Services, Dr. Iferemi Wanganabete, says they're also working to expand COVID-19 testing capabilities at the Lautoka Hospital. Lena Rees has more. Fiji has today tested over 10,000 people or more than 1% of our population for COVID-19 and have been highly ranked by the World Health Organization. That last week, WHO assessed our compliance to uh, COVID-19 testing and they've assessed us as having 100% compliance of the highest caliber of testing. So we have very rigid and stringent form of testing. As Fiji's obligation to other countries during this trying time, the health ministry is supporting those traveling back to their home countries as well as assisting our sister countries in the Pacific. And just last week, we had 19 patients come from Tuvalu who are currently in quarantine that are going to receive their secondary level health care in Fiji because the borders have been closed to them elsewhere. Meanwhile, today the health ministry received a donation of COVID-19 testing kits with over $600,000 from the government of the Republic of Korea and the Korea International Cooperation Agency. With these 408 test kits, we can test two, uh, 23,000 times all the kits are produced in Korea. But taking this opportunity, I'd like to express my sincere gratitude to the Ministry of Health for their tireless effort to contain the COVID-19. The Health Minister acknowledged Koika and the Government of Korea for being in constant contact with Fiji's Center for Disease Control on the type of COVID-19 tests best suited and needed in Fiji. Lina Rees, FBC News. Rate collection is under scrutiny in Levuka after the Ministry of Local Government discovered there was laxity on the town council's part. Further inquiry into the matter has shown some Fijians have left the country without clearing their rates or are living in Vitilevu but own properties in Levuka. Kelly Vavala reports. The municipal council has to keep the cities and towns clean, tidy. The Levuka Municipal Council needs funds to operate, but with ratepayers not being cooperative, public services may hang in the balance. 
There are people who have migrated abroad or they're living abroad, but they have not paid their rates. Also, there are rate payers who have got their homes in Levuka, but they're living on the main island now. They're living in Viti Levu, and they're not paying their rates. Some companies on the island have also been found defaulting on their rates. Right now, there are companies who have not paid rates in Levuka, and again, just because Levuka Town Council, they have not been invoicing them or not been sending demand notices. So the laxity is on the part of the council. They have not been aggressive in collecting uh, the rates owed to the council. Suva City Council Chair of Special Administrators Isikeli Tikundundua says the capital faces a similar situation. There are companies that are not paying the rates or in arrears, and we have a, a recovery team that follows them. The rate collection in Levuka is about 338,000 annually and 150,000 remains unpaid. In an effort to ensure rate payers are more responsible, the Ministry of Local Government will soon make amendments to the law. Kelly Vatala, FBC News. Australian national John Nikolic is appealing his 23-year sentence for drug smuggling, while the DPP's office is appealing his wife's acquittal on similar charges. The 45-year-old was found guilty of two counts of importing an illicit drug and being in possession of arms and ammunition without holding an arms license. Pranita Prakash reports. Clad in a white shirt with a yellow tie and navy blue Sulu, Nikolic appeared in the appeals court this morning. He initially had planned to appeal against his conviction as well as the length of the sentence, but the court was told he will now focus on the sentence only. His lawyer has sought time to file amended grounds of appeal. Nikolic was convicted of importing cocaine and methamphetamine worth an estimated $30 million and also of possession of two pistols and 112 rounds of ammunition. The items were discovered aboard his luxury yacht shenanigans at Port General Marina in Nandi on June 22, 2018. Nikolic's wife Yvette was also on the yacht and faced similar charges. However, she was acquitted by the High Court. The Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions is appealing her acquittal. Australian Federal Police contacted Yvette Nikolic to serve appeals document on behalf of DPP, but she refused to accept them. The state has asked for time to file submissions, including an appeal in absentia. Both Nikolic's appeal of his sentence and the appeal against his wife's acquittal have been adjourned to November 18th. Pranita Prakash, FBC News. It was a sole moment for students of Tilak High School as they bid farewell to two of their own who drowned last week. 18-year-old Shivnil Singh and 17-year-old Shalvin Singh drowned in the Driketi River in Vundalau Toka while trying to retrieve a ball from an inlet last Friday. Their bodies weren't recovered until Sunday. The two were today described very likable by all who knew them. Philippa Naikaso has more. Family, friends and students of Tilak High School gathered today at the school to say their final goodbyes to two of their own. Shelvin Vishal Singh, Bina Kuch Soche Samjhe. The tragic incident showed the love and care the brothers had for each other. This was because when one was drowning, the other without hesitation jumped in to save him. Shivnil and Shalvin have been described as hardworking, well-mannered and disciplined students and their passing has left family and friends devastated. I know it's difficult for the mother to be losing her two sons, so I urge parents that it's their role to educate and help children understand things that are happening around us. The two brothers were cremated at the Lovu Crematorium in Lotoka. Philip and Aikaso, FBC News. Up ahead, EFL worried about electrical works. And our look back to Fiji 50 continues. By today, Radio Fiji 2, Desh ki dhadkan. Energy Fiji Limited has raised concerns regarding landlords who are complacent about the safety of their tenants. This, as EFL has noted, many rented properties with unsafe electrical wiring, which poses threats to occupants' well-being. Apanisa Wangarandobu reports. 
Energy Fiji Limited stresses safety is paramount for all owners and tenants alike, but this is at times is not being taken into consideration. Electrical safety within your premises is paramount because it affects the lives of our family and family members. So I just like to tell all our customers who are our electricity customers that uh, you have to ensure that the electrical wiring within your premises, house or whatever it may be is up to standard and it has not sort of deteriorated over a period of time and are posing as a risk or a hazard. Patel says Fijians should take safety to their own hands, especially if they are renting and landlords not helping in the situation of electrical failures. It's better for you to immediately get the services of a registered electrical contractor, solve the problem, pay him and then give the bill to the landlord and tell him this is what I've done. Because expediency or speed is important because if you depend on the landlord and he's not an active landlord who's going to solve your problem immediately, then you don't want to keep your family at risk. The government should advise them to engage a certified electrical company to do the work in order to prevent electrical fire. There should be a list of registered electricians so that people can access them and landlords need to do their part for tenant safety. EFL says that registered electrical contractors should be hired to do the work. Patel says these people are experts and will know if wiring has deteriorated and may cause a problem in the future and if immediate works need to be carried out. FBC News. The Ministry of Local Government has denied reports that Suva ratepayers are paying for garbage collection in Nasinu. It says their agreement is for the Nasinu Town Council to pay the Suva City Council the entire cost of green waste, household waste and hard rubbish collection services. The year-long arrangement will cost about $2.4 million, with $1.6 million from the Waste Management Government Grant to Nasinu and the shortfall being met from their council's operating funds. The agreement includes costs to ensure that no money is being used from Suva. The Fijian Broadcasting Corporation's six radio stations in partnership with Make a Difference Fiji is undertaking a Diwali drive for a needy family. Manager radio program Shami Lochin says they will be helping Piniana Bukina Vanua and her two-year-old who have been living in a tent after tropical cyclone Harold. FBC's manager radio programs says this is being done in the true spirit of Diwali. The six radio stations uh, are going to uh, do this drive to help collect cash, furniture, bed, stove items for Piniana for Diwali. So the handover will be done during Diwali. Meanwhile, Make a Difference Fiji, a charitable organization working with FBC, collected more than $3,000 via market day on Saturday. The money will be used to build a house for Piniana. Most Fijians might be curious about the current status of various important documents that were either signed or handed over by His Royal Highness Prince Charles during Fiji's Independence Day in 1970. In our 50 Years of Independence segment today, we delve into the National Archives of Fiji to take a glance at Fiji's Independence Order, or our first constitution, which has paved the way for the late Ratukami Sesimara's government administration in the 1970s. Josai Nanunga files the story. This is the original signed Fiji Independence Order received by the late Prime Minister Ratu Seka Misesemara on the 10th of October 1970. Fifty years on, researchers, students, as well as private and public stakeholders are still after this historical record for their perusal. Lately, since Fiji's, um, uh, we are going towards the 50th anniversary of Fiji's independence, we have been receiving um, a lot of requests um, to, uh, uh, with regards to uh, these records. People are looking at um, um, the history of Fiji, the founding documents of Fiji, and this is one of the founding documents um, of our country. One might question the longevity of these valuable pieces of papers for public access and its preservation methods. Assistant archivist Michaelisi Rokoleka explains. When they will uh, see that 
there's a need for a repair on this document, they will have to bring it down and then we have to do our processes on restoration. If the pages are torn, we'll have to mend it with a special uh, tapes or we'll have to restore it using special tissues and um, if there's a need for desertification or washing of uh, these pages, we'll have to do processes. Among other Independence Day records kept at the National Archives includes historical photographs and audiovisual materials. These materials are also in high demand right now from various stakeholders for exhibition and display purposes leading up to the 10th of next month. Chosa Yerenuga, FBC News. And Whitney joins us now with the latest in business. Thanks, Jackie. Coming up in business tonight, Suva on sale excites business houses. And in growing Fiji, more turning to cover sales. Stay with us. Pula, nadang ko aprosa ng karse, ng orkraki. The television of our own radio Fiji one, nandomo ibit. Radio Fiji one, nandomo ibit. There will be a festive atmosphere leading up to the Fiji Day celebration in the Suva Central Business District with the Suva on sale back after three years. The Suva City Council yesterday announced that they will be having the Suva on sale from the 5th to the 10th of next month. Kritika Kumar reports. Considering that several retail workers have been let go or are on reduced hours, the Suva City Council believes the sale will create employment for some Fijians. There are others events that will uh, coincide with this to ensure that we all celebrate the independence. The Suva Retailers Association says there will be no closure of streets and COVID-19 restrictions will be in place. The plans are pretty simple on that. Uh, we won't be, there won't be any closure of streets, there won't be any tents. Uh, what we have decided in the end is that people will be, the retailers will be allowed to keep uh, uh, a, a table outside and have in-store sale. The association has encouraged retailers to take part in this as the economy needs a boost and this also coincides with Fiji's 50th year of independence. The Consumer Council is urging consumers to be wary and alert while taking advantage of the sale. What they need to do, they still have time, so what they need to do is they need to go around and check the prices now. So that when Suva is on sale, they can actually compare prices and see whether there is a drop in the prices and then they can take advantage of the sale. The last Suva on sale was held in 2016, which was for eight days. Kritika Kumar, FBC News. With Christmas season to be upon us in just over two months, decorations will again be the top of many people's list. However, in China, the impacts of COVID-19 has dampened seasonal cheer in a Chinese city that produces 80% of the world. We now join Sinifa from HFC Bank with the latest from the money market. The Reserve Bank of New Zealand decided at its September monetary policy meeting to keep the official interest rate unadjusted at a record low of 0.25% for the fourth month in a row. Across the Tasman, the Reserve Bank of Australia is cautiously optimistic about the economic recovery. This is despite the fall of consumer spending by 4.2% month-on-month in August, following July's 3.2% increase. This validates the Reserve Bank's commitment to keep monetary policy loose for a prolonged period. Meanwhile, the U.S. dollar is gaining altitude across the board, supported by positive U.S. economic data, showing that existing home sales surged to 6 million in August, the highest level in nearly 14 years. The greenback is likely to continue to grind higher in the short term as the coronavirus rattles sentiment in Europe, but uncertainty about this year's U.S. presidential election means the dollar could be prone to more volatile swings. That's all for now from HFC Bank, Pinaka.
Looking at today's local exchange rates as set early this morning, the Fiji dollar rose against the currencies of our two biggest trade partners, Australia and New Zealand, gaining on the PNG Kina and the Euro as well. It slipped against the Chinese yuan, the greenback and the yen. Commodity prices were down. The price of oil fell to just above $39 per barrel. Gold was down slightly at $1,901 per ounce and silver closed down at $39.31 per ounce. A lot of Fijians have engaged in the sale of kava during this difficult time, but there have been instances where their business was short-lived. Fiji Kava says it's crucial for those aspiring entrepreneurs to understand the process involved in selling kava in compliance to food and safety standards. General Manager Sales George Kotambalavu says kava is consumed widely and its quality should not be compromised. I think what's most important is making sure that um, the proper standards uh, in terms of hygiene and how the products are cleaned and uh, packed uh, to make sure that it meets the standards. Eh? Uh, because cacao is consumed as a beverage uh, mostly locally. So, you know, for, for people to be selling cava, whether it's on uh, the roadside in small cava shacks or having their own business, I think what's very important is uh, compliance to standards. Uh, and making sure that there is consistency. And that's it from Business Tonight. We now join Tale with the latest in sports. Thanks, Whitney. Good evening in sports tonight. Baba sets target for Murray Sevens. And Sevens brothers boost the Amadia. This and more are coming up. Bula FM, number 2 NSR. Bula FM, number 2 NSR. The players are not the only ones excited about the 44th Fiji Beta Maris Sevens. National Sevens head coach Gareth Baber just can't wait to watch some exciting talent on display over the next three days in Suva. Aquila Vama with the details. Well, I think obviously it's been a long time coming. Gareth uh, Baber will finally get a chance to watch our national reps playing sevens after six months. Um, and I'm obviously excited about it. I've been wanting to watch sevens. I haven't been able to do anything internationally. And I think that we're blessed here in Fiji to be able to be putting on a quality tournament like Marist. And, you know, from a men's perspective, uh, a 48 team tournament is exceptional when... The national coach will ensure those in the national squad deliver at the Marist sevens and also other tournaments before he makes up his mind on who will form his core squad next season. You know, we, I know what I've got to do to get the best out of every player that I've, I, is, is going to represent, potentially represent Fiji. And one of those things is to ensure that they're playing their best uh, week in, week out in, in, in domestic tournaments. One of the players Baber will keep an eye on is police blue playmaker Levi Ikanikonda. Last week we've been in camp. Only one week for preparation for uh, March 7 for defending the title. Uh, we've been uh, going through a lot of things, but it uh, was a short time. And thank the boys that they've been playing for the Skipper Cup so that uh, we can maintain our fitness. Ikani Konda and the other team captains were at the Mari 7's venue this afternoon for their photo shoot before the tournament starts tomorrow with the under 21 competition. Aquila Vama, FBC Sports. The Yamadia 7 side is aiming for a good start to the leather platform for their side during the 44th Fiji Beta Mari 7s. The Nandi based left yesterday for the tournament as they want to adapt to the Suva weather. Philippe Neikasso has more. Yamadia is not at all phased by the pool they have been drawn in but are just focusing on getting a good start. We've been preparing this couple of days. Uh a uh, number of our players were just in the skipper and uh, finding it hard to get the boys together. But we're really glad that uh, we got some of the boys back now and um, hopefully we uh, are yeah, preparing well for it. Laced with Fiji 7's rep and brothers Sevuloni Modena Dangi, Isoa Tambu and Kavikini Tambu, Yamadea will be looking to these three to spark the team. 
Uh, it's really been helpful seeing the boys, uh, our elder brothers in the Fiji team coming to join us. It gives boost to the young players as well. And hopefully it um, will uh, motivate us uh, and all the players. I believe in my players and I know they will give their all and play good rugby. The Fiji Beta Murray 7 starts tomorrow with the under-21 competition. The men's competition kicks off on Friday. Philippe and Aikaso, FBC Sports. The Fiji Beta Murray 7s is known to have uncovered some of the country's finest rugby players. Some notable names that were discovered during the tournament include the likes of William Ryder, Penny Ngonimeke, Kalion Yanasoko, Jerry Tuai, Chasa Vermalua and Suliano Volvoli. With several teams to make their debut in the 44th tournament, Marist Rugby Club President Lawrence Dickeram says more talent will be revealed. We've been doing it for the last 44 years. We're just the battle holders for the current uh, for the tournament, you know. And we give credit to where credit is due to the founder of the tournament, the late George Reed, and his team. Uh, recognition to where it's due to the players and the teams and the captains. This tournament is about them. The combat Uwina Kaubabas are banking on their younger players as they prepare to take on some of the best local sevens team in the 44th Fiji Beta Maris tournament. The Ra-based club bowed out in the semi-final last year, losing to Warden's goal 10-5. But this season, the side hopes to move a step further. Despite losing their key player, Kameli Rosaku, to the Barbarian brothers, the Ra team is confident they can step up to the challenge. Uh, some of the boys, they came from the village and some they are just uh, uh, living here in Suba. So we are coming together to train and prepare ourselves for the martial team. Ului Nakao has been known to turn heads in the tournament after producing a number of renowned players including former Fiji 7 stars Setereki Mbitiniata and Samuel Ambale. With that in mind, the side hopes to live up to the expectations of their fans and families. Uh, we lost in the semi-final, eh? the semi-final last year. And uh, we are trying our best, we are training hard so that uh, we can uh, have uh, progress. After playing for the team in the tournament for the last three years, 24-year-old Nora Saku says they want nothing less than the title. Uh, my aim for the upcoming Maria, Maria Sevens tournament is for us to win the tournament and reach top level for the upcoming Maria Sevens tournament, especially taking the cup uh, tournament. The combat Uluina Kaubabas will face Nambuwalu selection on Friday at 10.09 a.m. at Buckhurst Park. The Vodafone Vanua Championship will have its final round this weekend. Ovalau and Nanukuloa are the only two unbeaten teams from the four divisions. However, two teams from the north have plans to finish on a high this week. Aquila Dama with more. The Kondrofe may be out of the Vanua Championship. But they have learned a lot this season, and discipline is something the side will have to improve on next year. Discipline is something we learn every day at training. We teach the players to maintain discipline on the ground, and they are also taught the basic rules of rugby. However, sometimes they react to the decisions made by the referee, and they lose their temper, which contributes to our downfall. The Mbua team, on the other hand, has a high chance of making the quarterfinal as the second best team from the north. And just like the Kondrovi, they say there is a need to play smart rugby. Still a work on. We're still working on it. Uh, probably uh, it will be something they've been accustomed to, just to transfer that negative aggressiveness to positive uh, in order to do something uh, well for the game. And uh, I think it's, uh, it's part of the game. The Wanua Championship quarterfinals will be held next weekend. Aquila Dama, FBC Sports. In play of the day with the NBA playoffs underway, today we look at two crucial plays that sent the LA Lakers to victory in Game 2 against the Denver Nuggets. And that's it from Sports Tonight. Coming up in the world of the weird and the wonderful, we go to a country where a woman is breaking barriers. Find out more after the break. Bula FM, number two and seri. Bula FM, number two and seri.
And Angie joins us now with the latest in weather. Good evening and welcome to the weather world. You might have noticed things are quite different from yesterday. Yup, sunshine is in the picture. It's still a bit windy out there. We're almost through to the week's hail and hope there's some good weather around the corner. We shall find out in a while, but first let's see the weather's flavor in other centers. In the west, a few odd spots of showers that should change soon. Eastwards from Pak Harbor to Suva, looks like Mother Nature sorted things out. It's fine here, only the late evening will see sprinkles. And up north, the area of low pressure is slowly eating away. At sea, southeast winds 15 to 20 knots, moderate to rough seas. Turning to the tides, high tide at 11.35 p.m. with low tide at 6.07 a.m. Sunrise will be at 5.54. For tomorrow, the lumps of colors shown on the map is pretty exhausting to see, but don't worry, all the rainy stuff will go away. Tomorrow's stems, Savu Savu will be the coolest at 18 degrees, while Suva will follow the coolness at 19. And looking further on to Friday, you step out and say, oh wow, what a difference. Well, that's how it's going to be. Nice and fun. Well, that's all the weather from my side. Jackie has more latest updates next. Thanks so much for that, Angie. In Fiji Impulse, we asked, are you excited about Suvon Sale coming back after three years? Yeah, it's good for the people and even the good for the, like, even COVID-19. Eh? I'm looking forward to it because the prices will drop. Well, I think that uh, because of the COVID, and the money concern, eh? the people have not enough to do the shopping or like that now. I'm really looking forward to it because it's something new for me. In the world of the weird and the wonderful, we go to a place where women are not treated well, but one female is out to change that. There is only one woman taxi driver in Democratic Republic of Congo's region of Beni, where violence against women has become common. Recapping the main stories for tonight, Minister reveals agricultural setback, new lab plan for Nandi, and school bids farewell to deceased brothers. Now for these stories and others, tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. Our poll question we're asking, should more road humps be put in place to curb the growing number of road accidents? Visit our FBC website to answer. And on to our shot of the day. Moz Katanitambo captured the sunset from Namanda village in Bravi in the province of Nandronga. Send us newsworthy pictures and videos to email fbcnews at fbc.com.fj via Facebook page FBC News and our Twitter page at FBC underscore news. That's your news for tonight. Until tomorrow from the team and I, stay safe. Bye for now. Radio Fiji 2, Desh Ki Dhadkan.